for joining me. I'm with Featherweight Doctor in the Northwest. Uh, tonight is Ask the Doctor show. So tonight I am answering viewer questions on the featherweights and quilting or quilting on the featherweights. So I've got some information from you tonight. It's really warm here in the Pacific Northwest, about 110 outside. So I'm not going to be on for very long because Y'all, I gotta put my hair up, it's too hot. Um, let me get my feeds up. I'm gonna say hi to some friends and we're gonna get going on the show. How is everybody doing today? Um, like I said, it's been like silly hot the last couple days. I just got back in from Omaha yesterday. I had an amazing, amazing time in Omaha. They know how to make a girl feel welcome. That's all I can say. Judy and her wonderful husband, Drew, were fabulous, um, fabulous, fabulous to me. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to going back and doing some more stuff with them. She is in a great shop. I mean, great shop. Um, let me just get, I see Facebook. Let me get YouTube up. So look at this great cup they sent me home with so I can think about them when I'm not there. It has green on it, so it's, but Judy is also a green person, so everything in the shop has a green, like, uh, you know, like, pop of color on it, and I'm like, this is the most beautiful place I've ever seen. Most beautiful place. Okay. Let me just make sure I'm all up. Uh, dee -dee -dee. Come on. Come on, YouTube. Okay. You guys are cracking me up. Okay. Uh, okay, so let me just start with YouTube. Hi, Missy. Missy, I left you in charge of Redmond when I went to Omaha, and this is what I came back to. <laughs> what are you trying to do to me? <laughs> Hi, Rhonda and Quilter one Oh, we're, you're in North Dakota, right? You, we're hotter than North Dakota. That's shocking. And Francis is on. Hi, Francis. <clears throat> Let's see, I'm going to say I have some other friends here over on, um, on Facebook. Linda Wood, hi, sweetheart. I was, I was, you had shared something, Linda, so I drilled into your profile. Are all of those dogs in your profile picture your dogs? Or tell me that was like, your dog was at doggy daycare. <laughs> Y'all, she had about five dogs in her profile picture from a full-size standard poodle. To like a schnauzer and then some small other fluffy dogs. I was like, Linda, those are all your dogs. I mean, I'm a dog person, but you know, good Lord. Maybe someone should revoke your dog getting card. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Cause I joke on taking away people's sewing machine buying cards. <laughs> Hi, Becky, Becky. Hi, Linda. Congratulations on your new featherweight. By the way, I saw that you posted a picture of her on another group. Congratulations. Michelle's on from Oklahoma. Hi, sweetie. Judy P says it's only 90 where she's at. Lucky dog. Lucky dog. Hi, Leanne. Congratulations on your new centennial baby. What a pretty girl. And your beautiful white is showing up uh, on Friday. So you, you are loving life right now. It is a good featherweight week for Leanne in Georgia. Hi, Angel in Houston. Hope you're uh, enjoying your summer vacay. Mel and Joe are sending cool vibes. Hi, sweet friends. Kathy Klein is in Illinois. Hi, Kathy. Jerry Lou is in Florida. She says it's hot there, too. I would 100% believe that, Jerry Lou. Uh, Julie S. is on from Kansas. Hi, hi, hi. Nancy F. is on from Lake Stevens. Hello, sweetheart. Mary's on. Hello from Kansas. Bonnie's on from Illinois. Pauline's on from Texas. Sandy's on uh, in Maine. I think you're in Maine right now. No, oh, it says Maine. Okay, I'm a little hot. Sorry about that. Brain and mouth are not working together. Linda's on. Linda says 73 in Texas. Sweetwater, Texas, I believe. Fran Lordy's on from Indiana. Hi, sweetheart. Odie is on also from Oregon. Angel is on. Sarah. Hi, Sarah from So Much Charm, S-E-W. How are you doing out there in Houston? I hope your biz is doing awesome. Lawrence is on from Ohio. And Jen Jen's on. Hey, Deb from Georgia. Thanks for joining us. And let's see, each week here is going to be hotter and hotter, so we will be melting too. <laughs> Missy said she failed. 
Missy, I left you in charge of the weather in Redmond, and this is, you did fail, girl. You did fail. Uh-oh, wait. Someone's calling. Gotta just stop that. Okay. All right, friends. It is Polly. Hi, Polly from UK. Thanks for joining us. Okay, so it's 110 outside. Us. Hi, Kathleen from SoCal. Thanks for joining us. And Debbie's on from Kentucky. So us Northwesterners in general do not have air conditioning. So this weather is just silly. It's just silly. I am in the basement of my home, which is 10 degrees cooler than upstairs, and I see that my temperature thermometer down here says it's 80, which means that upstairs is at least 90. It is 110 outside. We are dying. <laughs> I'm like, do you want to go to the mall tonight for dinner? <laughs> Let's get out of this sweat box. Do I need anything from the mall? No. Will I walk around and totally use their air conditioning? Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, Linda is coming to her dog picture defense. She says, when we get together, when we have a family get together, we have eight babies. Oh, only two of those sweet babies are yours. Okay. I just wanted to make sure because I was a little concerned if you were feeding all of those puppy mouths. That's a lot of puppy mouths to feed. <laughs> okay. So tonight, um, so the first topic tonight is bed cushions. So a lot of people call them sewing machine feet, but then when you start talking about presser feet, it gets really confusing. So that's why we are calling that, we call them bed cushions. They are little rubber discs. Angel, I have one AC unit in my bedroom window and my bedroom stays at 73. That's how I can sleep at night. But, and I did work from my bed most of the day today because I wanted to sit in the air conditioning. But unfortunately, that would have been weird to have you guys upstairs. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're down here. We're down here sweating it up. So. <laughs> so anyway, these are bed cushions. These are the little rubber feet that sit on the bottom of the sewing machine. So the reason why we are talking about bed cushions is because my Dear Isabel, so Isabel and Ray are my two part-timers. Um, Isabel is my adoptive daughter, and Ray is my natural daughter, and they both work for me. They both help with orders. Um, Isabel's here pretty much part-time, um, even though she doesn't even go to school. In this area, it just happens. I tend to collect these y lovely young ladies, and I wouldn't miss any of it. I mean, I wouldn't miss a moment of any of it. That's how we've got the first time. I'm really warm. I'm sorry. So anyway, uh, Isabel, uh, she's helped me with a bunch of virtual classes and workshops. And apparently, this little sewing machine was growing on her. And I didn't know it. And so yesterday, out of the blue, she comes up to me. And she says, um, hey, I found a featherweight I want to buy. Uh, and I'm like, for what? <laughs> exactly what I said. Why do you want a featherweight? And she says, well, I was thinking about sewing some stuff. I kind of want to know how to sew. And I'm like, everybody should know how to sew. I mean, bare, bare basic sewing of at least mending, you know, how to like take your pants in, hem your pants, do a button. Like these are all really basic skills that I feel like a lot of the current generation, which Ray and Isabel would absolutely fall in that category, but not in the part about not knowing how to sew now uh they don't teach in home ec anymore so i feel like it's it's you know unless someone like isabel just kind of goes into it wanting having a desire for that type of skill it's not going to naturally come to them so <laughs> sweat is good for the skin bridget really <laughs> well my skin is doing great today then <laughs> So anyway, uh, I said she was going to pick it up. She found one on OfferUp. She negotiated for it. It was an okay price. Um, I said, "Can I? Do you want me to go with you? You don't even know what you're buying. You, you know, like you don't even know what you're buying." So she got to take the featherweight doctor with her to buy a sewing machine. That poor guy. <laughs> yes, another cult member, Bernadette. Yes, she's a member of the Cool Kids Club. For sure. <laughs> so anyway, um, we went and picked it up. The machine was not in the, like the finish of the machine was not fabulous. Um, 
but good Lord, it was fast. And I will tell anybody about a good stitch machine. Like the, the aesthetics and the beauty of the machine, in my opinion, comes secondary to how it sews. And this one was fast. Hi, Marsha from Indiana. Thanks for joining us. So anyway, um, we went and picked it up. There, the lamp was hanging on by barely by a thread on the screw holding it. And there was some, someone tried to MacGyver the light switch. It was clearly like the original one was cracked and they had jammed something else into it and then used electrical tape in the middle of the machine to connect the wires. We are talking fire hazard. So I was able to get everything rewired for her. Um, and get it kind of cleaned up and actually when we were done cleaning it it was in I mean it had some wear and but it would I think it looks great so she's calling her Sylvia um, because the gentleman we bought it from was named Sylvan so and it wasn't his but I just we, we both like the name so Sylvia it is um, anyway so we've been doing some quilting lessons today uh, and so that's the second thing we're going to talk about. But the first thing we're going to talk about these bed cushions because Sylvia, the 1955, it was a 55, yeah. 55 featherweight. Hi, Madeline from SoCal. Thanks for joining us. Um, was they were melted into the body of the machine and hardened. You couldn't even see the screws, the tops of the screws that were holding them on. So I wanted to talk about that for a second. So these are the new bed cushions that we sell. They're really nice, they're soft, they're rubber. If you've ever played Chase Your Sewing Machine across the table, you know that having bed cushions that are nice, sticky bed cushions that stick where you put it on the table and do not chase around the table because you have nice, soft bed cushions is worth the $6 that we sell a set of these for. Um, but we are talking specifically about removing them. And let me see, I wanna change my camera. So I have this machine here. This is a machine that's in for service and I want to show you. So these bed cushions are actually not that bad. They're actually flattened, but you can still see the screw head on them. Isabel's Sylvia machine were so melted and congealed that you couldn't even see the screw heads on them. So this is what you do. Ah, hold on here. There, okay, sorry. So what you do is you, first of all, the other, um, so the other things I've seen, because I was taught that class this weekend in, uh, in Omaha, some people like are missing the little screw that holds the, um, the foot onto the machine. A lot of the screws on the featherweight are proprietary and not made anymore, but that bed cushion screw is not one of them. You can buy replacements. So if your machine sits uneven, not level on the tabletop, or I've seen this happen several times where people pull, they lose one of the screws, so in order to have the machine sit level, they remove the other three, and they stick those felty pads from furniture, from the bottom of furniture on them. Y'all, that, you stick those felt pads on the bottom of your chairs, so your chairs will slide nicely across your hardwood and your hard surface floors. So obviously, Sticking those on the bottom of your sewing machine doesn't make a lot of sense because the machine is just going to scooch across the table as you're trying to sew with it. Yeah, Polly says they end up end up looking like chewing gum on yes on the corner of the machine. Exactly. So, uh, hi Melanie, thanks for joining us tonight. So anyway, we uh, I use this tool to get those off. This is my dull scraper. Yes, some of you might know the story of how this very tool tried to remove this finger right here. Um, but we're, we're careful now. We're more careful than we used to be. <laughs> so anyway, what you're gonna do is use a, a scraper to unbury the head of the screw. A lot of times the slot on the top of the screw, which is a flat slot, is also covered and congealed. So um, I take our, the screwdriver that we sell, which has a really um, narrow, flat head on it and I'll use it to scrape out the groove or the slot on the top of the flathead screw so I can at least get to the top of the flathead screw. Then with these long torquey screwdrivers you can kind of pop them to moving. Once you've removed the screw you can go back in with either the head of your same screwdriver or this tool, the, the pick side of this tool and dig out the rest of the bed cushions. 
it's it's kind of a messy job. I would recommend wearing some gloves also for safety reasons to protect your hands from, you know, force and sharp objects. Ask me how I know that. Um, and so anyway, you can eventually get all of the, the um, old bed cushions out and be able to then put the new bed cushions back in. Um, <clears throat> It really is worth the elbow grease. I don't know if it's worth it when it's 110 outside, but we did it anyway last night, didn't we, Isabel? Yes, we did. Um, but anyway, now Miss Sylvia sits level and smooth on the table, and it does not try and scoot away when she's been sewing today. So that was one of the topics I wanted to discuss on the live tonight. The next one is because Isabel is literally a brand new sewer, quilter, today was day one. I got to be that person that showed it to her. I was really excited. It's very flattering. She'll forever remember me. I mean, she'll forever remember me anyway. I'm pretty memorable. But I mean, she'll really remember me now as the one that introduced her to her new hobby. Um, so anyway, we were talking about seam allowances. In quilting, I feel like there are a lot of uh, 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 conversations that can happen. Should you mix solid flat uh, cottons with flannels? Should you use polyester thread? Should um, should you wash your fabrics before you, you cut into them? There are lots of questions that I get every day that are um, open for interpretation and open for debate and it's a personal preference thing. There are some things that are not in my opinion, open for interpretation, open for personal expression. And your quarter inch seam allowance is one of them. Quilters are fanatical about a good quarter inch seam because it's how we get all of these tiny pieces that we cut up to go back together in the same way that the pattern designer intended them to go. Take my nebula blocks behind me, for example. If I did not have good true seam allowances, there's no way all of those blocks would eventually fit together into a stunning quilt because even though that's a, they're diamonds, if one diamond was slightly smaller, even a quarter of an inch off, they don't line up and it doesn't go back together and you end up having holes in your quilt and having to, you know, start over again. So it's really important as with new quilters that there is a good, healthy respect instilled for the quarter inch foot. Um, the featherweight, the foot that comes on your featherweight is not the one that is fat on one side and skinny on the other. That's what the toe plate looks like. It is the four millimeter foot and it is was originally intended by Singer to be uh, used for French hems uh, in clothing construction. So it is not a quilting foot. It is not a quarter inch foot. Uh, a lot of people try to get around not having a vintage original quarter inch foot with their Singer featherweight by using seam guides, some that you strap to the bed of the machine. You guys all know how I feel about anything that straps to the bed of the machine and could potentially scratch up your finish. I say no thank you to that. Um, you can use blue painter's tape, but you do not leave any tape, even blue painter's tape, on your machine unless you're just using it at that moment. Um, there's another seam guide that was created. Hi, Angela in Omaha. Oh, great. Thanks. She said, I discovered you while you were in Omaha. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for joining us. Um, anyway, there's the seam guide that was created by Singer. Um, and it, it is also metal. It also can scratch, slide out and scratch. Um, so th I think, in my opinion, that the best quarter inch seam allowance is created by using a quarter inch foot. My preference is the one that is a quarter inch from either side of the needle. There is uh, another one that actually has a, a curb or an edge or a guide on it. You can use that, but it's only on the right side of the foot. And I really like using, um, I really like using the one that is a quarter inch from either side. Angel, that's a good question. There actually is no vintage quarter inch foot. The quarter inch feet that are now available were made in. And later on because Singer really never intended them to be used by uh, by quilters. Quilting was mostly done by hand back in the day when these machines were created. So there is not a vintage quarter inch foot. There are aftermarket feet that are now produced that uh, we carry on our website. You can find at other sewing stores. Um, but, but having a good quarter inch foot that is something that you like to use, like for instance there's plexi or there's metal 
quarter inch feet. Some of my customers who have strong cataracts cannot do plexi feet because Call? Okay. <laughs> Cole just tried to call. Can you tell him I'm on my show? Um, anyway, so I feel, so the plexi foot is not good for some people. I like the metal foot, the ones that we sell, because I've tried them all. So I carry the ones that are my preference. So a good quarter inch foot, and if you really do need that extra, Odie, we carry the metal one that is, well, we carry both. We carry the one with the guide, because some people just really need the guide. But then we carry the one that's just the metal foot with the little lines on it, and it's a quarter inch from either side. So that's the, we sell them for $16.95. They're on the website. They're always available. Um, but some people really do need a little bit of something extra, and that's where I feel like the blue painter's tape comes in. It doesn't scratch anything. The blue is, the blue adhesive back of the tape is not corrosive to the, fi to the finish of the feather rate. I don't leave it on my machines. I only keep it on there when... Um, I am quilting and then I take it off but I just really want to talk a little bit more about seam allowances in case some of you are a little newer like Isabel was today um, it's really important oh thank you Angel <laughs> you're doing Reagan's job for her <laughs> that's it that's the one yes thank you for putting the link in the in the feed all right so I think I've talked at nauseum about quarter inch feet and seam allowances and bed cushions. So now I thought I would give everybody some reminders. I have, it was really exciting to me on Friday when I flew out early to Omaha um, to see so many people out and about. It really felt kind of normal or at least normaler. Is that a, a word? Sure. Um, and it means that things are starting to open back up again and uh, and so that was kind of exciting to me because I've definitely missed kind of being in classrooms with people. I do like the virtual stuff that I do, and I think they definitely have their place and time, but it also is fun to be out a little bit. So the workshop I flew into this weekend was in Omaha. Um, and it, uh, it had 24 people in it. You guys, there were 24 machines in a room. I was so happy. Two tans, one little white one from the mid 60s and the rest were black. A couple centennials mixed in there. It was so much fun. Half the room was brand new to their feather weight. I really think that with COVID people have really, because being stuck at home so much, people have really started to pull out grandma's machine and start tra trying to figure out how to use them and how to, you know, take care of them. And so the class um, the class was very full of people wanting, wanting to devour information about their vintage machines. Um, with that in mind, I have some more classes, both in person and virtual, coming up. So I thought I would just give everybody my schedule for the next couple months. Um, I'm going to be back in Omaha in August. It is not a maintenance workshop. Uh, Judy there specifically wanted me to teach on quilting and the featherweight so to do a full two-day workshop on how a lot of people know that the featherweights are fabulous for their um, perfect straight stitch so people use them for piecing but these machines are so much more than just piecing machines and so that's what that workshop there in Omaha August 19th and 20th is going to be for it's for showing people everything that these little machines can do and since as a company my motto is to make famous these little machines and show people how fully robust little quilting machines they are I was all about coming out and spending two days with a couple dozen people in Omaha to show them what they could do so that's coming up August 19th and 20th I believe the workshop is more than full and will definitely be full um, here in the next couple weeks. So if you're at all interested, you should definitely check it out if, if you're within range to get to Omaha, Nebraska, 18th, the 19th and 20th of August. I also have my full series of workshops coming up in Phoenix the third week of September. So there's going to be a beginning machine quilting class. You can bring your feather weight or your modern machine to that. We're gonna do a quilt as you go class and also a feather weight maintenance class or spa day. So that's gonna be the week of September 20th through the 24th in Phoenix. Um, then I will be back in Omaha in November, November 5th and 6th for two back-to-back -back maintenance classes. 
there is a large wait list there and we're going to try and get some people knocked out before the winter hits. I, I understand Omaha winters are terrible and I definitely don't want to go there with snow and ice on the road, which seems kind of funny to talk about right now when it's 110 outside and we're all sweating. <laughs> but that's coming up. Um, for those of you who are not in um, in earshot of, or card car shot, I should say, of Omaha or Phoenix. I do have two virtual workshops on the calendar for this summer in July. There is a virtual spa day on July 22nd, um, which is a Thursday afternoon slash evening, depending on what part of the country you're in. And then I also am doing another two-day quilting classes class on two consecutive Sundays, July 25th and August 1st. Those classes are up on our website, featherweightdoctor.com, and you can sign up there to participate in the virtual Zoom classes. Uh, that was all I had for you guys tonight for my reminders. Um, I want to really thank you for coming out and joining me. For those of you who messaged me to check on me with the heat, um, I so appreciate that. It just makes me smile. Thank you for reaching out and making sure we're doing okay. We're, we'll get by today. <laughs> Connie, Connie, did you get my message today? Connie Harder, I sent you an email. Did you get it? <laughs> So anyway, uh, yeah, we are, we're, we're getting by here. The temperatures start to drop tomorrow. So things should be, things should be returning back to normal. At least get back to the 80s. I can, I can totally do the 80s. So I want everybody to have a good night. If you are struggling with all this heat like I am, I'm thinking about you, I'm drinking lots of water, walking the mall, going to the movie theaters, any place where they're offering air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> That's my plan anyway. <laughs> Mel, I'll let her know that you're looking forward, Isabel, that you're looking forward to seeing your, her first quilt. She's doing the mini, hold on, I'll show you. So Isabel is working on the mini brick road um, table runner. That's what I'm having her do for her first quilt. I think it's a great idea. She's doing, she had a little boo-boo with the, with the cutting, but she has plenty of fabric, so we're recutting. Mary, the weather in Omaha was nice. It was a little stormy, but nothing too scary. It was like dry lightning, which I actually thought was really pretty when we lived in Phoenix. It's the whole tornado things. No, thank you. <laughs> oh, that's fun, Melanie, heading to Colorado Springs in July. That sounds great. All right, friends. I hope you have a great night. Thanks for joining me. I will be back on Wednesday for... I don't know what I'm doing yet on Wednesday, but I'll be back on Wednesday at 4 o'clock Pacific Standard Time on Facebook and YouTube. So go ahead and, and tune in to see what we're talking about that night. Have a good night, everybody. I'm going to go sit in the AC for a few minutes and cool back down. I hope you have a